My name is Lori Boatman, and I am a sixth grade social studies teacher at Wabash Elementary that's in the Winsville School District. I am presenting today on how to create digital interactive notebooks. So just in case you don't know what an interactive notebook is, um, an interactive notebook is a way for students to not only take notes, but it's also a way for them to process the information. Um, they can process it in various ways. Um, some examples of what you can include in, a, in an interactive notebook um, are things like creating a journal, like the students can pretend that they are from whatever time period, if you're talking about history, whatever time period they are, um, you're talking about, and they can process the information as through another person's eyes and um, talk about an experience they would have had using the information that they've learned. Um, another example is making greeting cards. You can have them make a greeting card, including information that they've learned. Um, creating timelines, self-explanatory. Um, webs, diagrams, um, comic strips, posters, uh, memes, if you're using digital formats, videos, all kinds of different things that you can include. It's going beyond the idea of worksheets and allowing students to really think about the information and create something that shows their understanding of the information, but allowing them to be creative in the process. So why would you create a digital notebook and not just do a traditional notebook? Well, there are several reasons. Um, I used traditional notebooks up until last year when um, we had our pandemic. The reason why I decided to make the switch is because students were always forgetting their notebooks. Um, with all the quarantines that were going on and the number of students out of school, I thought it would have been a um, would it be a good idea for them not to have to worry to carry a physical notebook back and from school. Um, so I switched to digital notebooks then. Um, this allowed my students to have access anytime, anywhere to all of my lessons, to video directions, printed directions, um, anywhere they needed to as long as they could get to a computer. And um, obviously this requires a lot of being able to have students be one-to-one -one in your classroom, um, at least to have it access to a device in your classroom because they're going to need to be on the computer to access their digital notebooks. Um, this was great. It worked out so well for me when they were out on quarantine. I had um, lots of comments and compliments saying that, you know, uh, from parents like my students could access everything or my children could access everything. Um, they had continuity and everything was very clear. Um, overwhelmingly, I surveyed the students and overwhelmingly they loved the digital format much better. I think there was only maybe two or three kids of all the kids that I surveyed last year that said they would have rather had a traditional notebook. All of them loved the digital format other than those couple of kids. Um, digital format versus traditional. Um, a digital allows the addition of a lot of different multimedia aspects. Um, so, for example, I can link uh, video lessons directly onto different pages. The big thing that works really well for me is being able to have um, uh, videoed directions. So if the student's at home and they're working and they're not really sure what to do or kind of confused, they can play a video where it's linked right there onto the activity they need to do that shows them, walks them through how to do that activity. Um, it also allows for uh, a much even more even playing field when you come to uh, students that have reading difficulties um, or need accommodations for like note taking and things like that. I have um, modified notebooks that have all the text recorded so they can just click on the text and hear what I am saying in that. So it allows students to be a lot more independent. Um, and it allows a lot more fun digital activities. I will be honest, things like um, storyboards. Uh, we use storyboard that to create comic strips, uh, making memes, they love that. Uh, digital magazine covers. Um, we use Canva for things like greeting cards and infographics, um, pictures for vocab, drag and drop activities. Um, and like I said it before, individualized modifications and accommodations, which makes it really awesome. Um, so, I'm going to walk you through today how to create one of uh, a digital notebook. I'm going to show you some examples of digital notebooks that I've created. 
show you how to do it so you can make one of your own if you are interested in doing this with your students. I will also have linked in the um, YouTube video some resources, some websites that I use, um, and different like a, a sheet with different activities that you can incorporate into your digital notebooks, um, as well as suggestions on how you can make it digital versus paper. All right, let's get to it. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna take you through how I set up an interactive notebook. Um, before I do that, I just wanna kind of show you some samples of two interactive notebooks that I have created, one modified, one not modified, so you can see some of the modifications that I put in. Um, this is my notebook for Greece, which is a unit we're on right now. So I kind of wanted to talk, take you through that one since I'm using it already anyway. So I always have a table of contents on, on the page so they can see what's in, what's in on each, you know, in the notebook. And then I have point values assigned. Now you can use rubrics. You can definitely take a picture of a rubric and put it in here instead of a table of contents. This is just what I use. Um, this is a way for the kids to keep track of their learning. This is what I call the big three. It is on the rating scale of four, three, two, one. Um, if they can learn the learning targets and understand and describe the things in the learning target, they at least have a three, which is where we want them to be. So the way they do this, um, I used an image map um, to create this. This is under the line tool. Um, it's called this, um, I think it's the polyline. So you just take it through and you connect the line by clicking in various spots. And you will eventually trace around the shape to, and I'm doing this really quickly here, um, to create the outline of the shape, you just kind of click on the line. And when you're finished, you have the puzzle piece. Now, obviously, I did that really, really quick so you can see that it's not perfect. But then you just pick your fill, color, whatever. If you want to read the learning target, you make it transparent by clicking the custom and then moving the transparency down. And then you can see the learning target underneath it. So that's how I do that. Um, let me get rid of that, though. Um, so, oops, that. so on here, let me go back to this. Um, they just, as when we learn the learning target, they take the puzzle piece that I made for them and they cover up the piece with the learning target on it. So when they know they're finished, when all of these are covered. So going back to this, this is my levels of understanding. These are my learning goals for the unit and these are the targets. So the first thing we do is we always take an assessment. The kids then rate themselves in their understanding of the learning targets um, after the uh, pretest by rate, dragging and rating themselves in the first box. Then when we finish the unit, they read through it again. They click and drag to rate themselves on where they finished after they take the final test. So then they have two sets of scores beginning and end of the unit. I always have a map. Um, you can definitely do a digital map. I like doing um, maps on paper because I just feel like it's more beneficial for the kids to label and color. So they do it on paper and then we go to insert image um, camera to take a picture. I don't have my camera turned on right now, but insert image camera, you take a picture and then they, it goes right onto the slide and then you can crop it if you want and resize however to fit the page. I do vocabulary next. Um, this is my online textbook so they can click here to go to the online textbook. I always have directions written down here and on the side so they have multiple places to look. If they can't find it there, it's over here. And then we do the vocabulary in a sentence and add a picture from Google. Now this is where I get into my notes. Um, the notes I use are um, graphic organizer type notes, but you can definitely do um, like different notes like Cornell, Cornell style or outline, or even if you have iPad, sketch noting is a good thing. You could try to do sketch notes on this, except that you're not actually drawing anything. You would have to be finding pictures or you could you know, use the line tool. It just wouldn't be as, in my opinion, beneficial. So I stick to graphic organizers because then they can organize their notes and then quickly find. So if they want to know something about the land um, on Greece, they will go to geography. It's under land features. 
This is something I bet have teachers to pay teachers, but this is an example of how you can take a worksheet. These were for stations that you can take a worksheet and make it into a digital version. So I took the PDF, put it through a PDF to JPEG. They have it free on the internet. You upload it, it gives you a JPEG, which is a picture, and you can put it right on the slide. And then I added text boxes to each one. So if I zoom in, you can see how they can click right here and type into their information. The benefit of this is again, you have your worksheets and papers in one place and you can't lose it. Um, also, I can have things linked on the sides, like there's, there's the actual paper stations linked right there. Um, everything's all together. So when they turn in everything, everything's in one spot. More note slides. This is an example of a compare contrast where they have to type here for the differences in the T chart format. And then they type the similarities down there. This is an acrostic puzzle. So um, I, I wrote Sparta down. You can't, oh yeah, you can't move it. <laughs> I probably don't have that in the background, but here you go, text boxes where they just type in the information. This is in the background so they can't move it. This is obviously a Venn diagram. You can see that I have text boxes ready for them to compare and contrast. This is a video game that they created. I added a text box for the description of the game. It's going to be based on the Greek wars. So they're going to have to find images to add here. Here's the benefit of this. So they get to do this um, activity. It's going to require them to use more of their information from what they learned, um, but it's more creative and it's more open-ended and they're applying their skills instead of just recalling information. Um, over here, and this is a benefit of digital, I have my directions videotape. So I recorded this, I think Loom, and then I uploaded it into YouTube and then I added the YouTube video right there. So if they need help, they can just come over here and play it. And then over here, directions, and then a full scale directions right there. So it's in print and video format. This is an activity that we do on gummy bear governments. They're going to re figure out, uh, research the seven types of government here, and then they make a gummy bear um, government video using gummy bears. They create government scenes. Then they make a Flipgrid video where they discuss um, what their scene shows and why it, how it shows that form of government they are showing. Then they add it from, they download it from Flipgrid and add it to their page. So more notes. This is a journal entry. Um, I love journal entries because they have to pick a person to kind of imagine the life of through that person's eyes. And then they talk about what their life would be like um, if they were living in Athens. And again, they have to use information from their notes. This is a drag and drop activity where they after they learned about Alexander the Great, then they have to drag the events onto the timeline here. So I created this timeline with the arrow and then they come in and they drag and drop these activities in the right spot. So they're ordering it by the date on the bottom. Um, here's another great reason why I use um, digital notebooks is that they I can record my lesson and place it right onto the slide so that if they're you know gone or they're working at home and they can't remember something, they didn't write it in their notes, you know, whatever it is, they can come over here and they can replay the lesson. And again, I have my directions here too. This is a Time Magazine article that they're going to do on Alexander the Great. Um, they have to layer the pictures. They have to create an article talking about why he would be the person of the year. What did he do that was cool? Why is he great? Um, and again, I have a video direction right there. This is something that the kids always think is fun, creating memes. So the creating memes, I um, found this template on the internet and I took it, I put it on here, and then I added a lot more pictures because there was a few picture options, but I wanted them to have more and I didn't want them to go and like search pictures and find, you know, something that would maybe be inappropriate. So I gave them a whole bunch of pictures that they can use that they scroll all the way down, there's even more. Um, so what they do is, they're going to make a meme about philosophers. So they think about what they want to say in their meme. They find a picture that kind of matches that and they drag it over and they drop it. And then they're going to resize it.
and then they layer it down by hitting com command shift down and then up one time oops up one time and then they can change the text on there and they have a meme uh this one they create mythology trading cards in person and i have every all the information for them linked right there um, rubric and everything linked right there. So what they do is they take a picture of it when they're finally done and they edit front and pack to that slide. Another thing I got off Teachers Pay Teachers, they click and add in there. And that's the end of that notebook. Here is an example of a modified notebook that I have. So same format in the beginning. And then you get down to these. So these are all um, linked with think they were <laughs> they're, they're linked so they were linked so you could click on them I don't know what happened to that I have to fix that um they're all this is modified one yeah so there should be linked there it is there's one so they should be linked where I click on the text and all they have to do is click on that and it'll read it to them um I use Vokaroo for that another good one is moat but moat has just started charging. So Vokaroo is free. All you have to do is record it and you can add the link directly to it. Um, I have drag and drop notes because I have students that have teacher provided notes. So they have drag and drop notes. I also have them um, in other notebooks, like just fill in the words. So you can take out blank, you know, take out words and have them type in just the word or two. Um, another example of some modifications is the fact like down here, they have the information, also the directions also read to them, so they can click that link and hear me read the directions to them. But some activities in here, I have another timeline of different pharaohs, um, a postcard activity, which that was, they, they think that's fun. These um, Snapchat, uh, I made all these with shapes. So you just make the shapes to make it look like a phone, layer it like a picture. And then I made out these grade bars to kind of look like the Snapchat bar that kind of gets drug over. And this is an example, I make an example of what it looks like when it's finished. This one's a fun one. Would you rather? So I add like a few different would you rather scenarios and they take a picture of themselves pointing to their choice so either Tutankhamun or hot Shepset, and they put their picture pointing to which one they want then they come and they pick one of those would you rathers and they explain why they picked that this is a help wanted they fill out their job title um, based on one of the social classes they fill out their job title job description skills and again all of these activities are requiring them to use their information but then apply it somehow this is a planner where they're going to pick either a man or a woman or a child from ancient egypt and what would their typical day look like based on what they know about that and then this one is a cartouche so i have all little cartouche things labeled and stacked so they can just pull over you know their letters and as you can see there's more underneath it so they can come through and write out their name or phrase or whatever you want them to write in hieroglyphs so it just gives them a little fun activity to do so now that you've seen some examples let's go through how to actually create one of these So you want to start with a blank and I'm using Google Slides because that's the best um, tool in my opinion to have kids edit um, together or edit by themselves or whatever, turning it into you um, thing to use. But you want to use some kind of presentation tool. So I'm going to use Google Slides. Um, sorry if you use something else, but this is what I use. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to decide on how you want your page to be set up. So you can set it up as um, an eight by, you know, like a notebook, like eight and a half by 11. So it's like more of an up and down type piece of paper. So when you print it, it'll be page size. Um, I keep it the way it is. Uh, you can you can definitely set it up however you want. Um, when you set it up, you can keep it like this and you can have an open notebook format where you have two pages on each side, or you can have it set up where I have just one page shown. Um, that's how, like, I'll show you right here. You see just one page is being shown here, but you can set it up however. They have many different ways you can set up the notebooks. In fact, um, one of the free sites that you can use to have a kind of template already set up for you is um, Slides Mania. And you can see here's one that has the up and down length and one that has 
like the long version. Um, but you can create however you want. You just need to figure out what you want your layout to be. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to delete what I already did, but you delete that where it says click to add title and everything. You want a blank slide. So this is kind of like my best friend, and it can be your best friend too, slide edit theme. So when you want something that's in the background, there's a couple of different ways you can go about it. If you want to create it directly in slides, where you what you want your backgrounds to be, you're going to use edit theme. Um, you can use other things like Canva. Um, I've done that before where you make the backgrounds and then you can add it as a background picture and it won't move. I just go ahead and make everything in the notebook for the most part because it just seems to make the most sense instead of using two programs. But some people do use things like Canva to make their backgrounds and then go ahead and upload it in here. And some people use like PowerPoint because they have more fonts and things to choose from. I'm not really worried about making it beautiful looking. I want it to be functional. And I don't want to switch back and forth between two or three different things. So I'm just going to use the edit theme app. So the, there's two different types of slide. There's one slide that's bigger than all the other ones that says theme. Theme is going to be what you want every single page in your notebook to look like. Whatever you put on there is going to apply to every single page in your, it's like this. It's like a theme like this. Whatever you click on, that's going to be your theme for every page. Okay. So I need to think first of what do I want my background to look like? Well, the first thing that I want to make sure that I have is a page. So um, you can go and search like notebook page. I search blank composition notebook page. And when it, you search it, you look at the images. You want to find images that have higher resolutions because that's going to give you the best results. If you do a lower resolution picture, like, I don't know, like that's kind of a lower resolution. You want to do like 1200 by 1200 type pixels, something that, or maybe a little bit more would be good for a background picture because then it won't get all fuzzy if you have to stretch it out or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead. I have one downloaded already. Save time. So insert image. I'm going to upload from computer. Um... I'm going to insert the notebook just like that. So I downloaded that. Now I could keep it if I wanted to keep just a notebook, you know, open. I can keep it like that and then size it to fit the page, crop it, whatever. But what I'm going to do is stretch it so just like this little piece here is shown. So I'm going to do that by um, double clicking on it. You get those black bars. Then you bring it down to just where you want it to be. And I'm going to take it right about there. And then I'm going to move that to maybe like there. And then slice that down to about there. Click off of it, and that's what I got. So now I'm going to come over and put it in the corner. And then I'm going to stretch it across most of the page. And then come over here and do the same thing there. Um, I don't like that it has the edge of that back corner showing, so I'm going to double click on it again and bring it up really close. And now i got this funky looking corner, so I'm going to actually come over here and crop it. This is the crop button. If you click the arrow by the crop button, you can crop it into different shapes. I'm going to crop it into that shape. And I'm going to round that out just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to just like that. And I'm going to have a little bit white space here for my tabs, and I'm going to show you how to use later. So now when I click through the layouts, you can see right here, every page looks exactly the same. This down just a tad. There we go. So every page looks exactly the same. So you want to check and make sure that it's showing the way you want it to show. And it all looks about right. Okay. So now that I have that set up, the other thing I want to set up is the tabs. So I like using tabs, and this is the reason, because if I come over here and I put this in present mode, and say I quickly want to get to my vocab, 
click the tab and I'm there. If I will click the one to get to Pharaohs, there it is. If I want to get to my information about pyramids, I'm right there. So I don't have to keep scrolling through all my slides trying to find it. It quickly takes me to the, the meat, the information, the quick thing that I need to study for my test or my quiz or whatever it is I need to look at. That's how I get to my information real quick. So it's not something you have to include, but I like to include it. So I always use on my coming up to shapes and I use this shape right here. And the first thing you want to do is kind of decide how many tabs you need because that'll determine um, how many of these things you need to make. Once I make a tab, I come back over here and then I duplicate it. So they're all uniform size. And then I keep doing that all the way down. Then I always set my colors. So I come over here. Um, I like rainbow color, but you guys can do like this is up to you if you want it like an orange theme for you know for one of your notebooks or if you like a gradient kind of style whatever it is doesn't really matter this is all your you know creativeness but I'm going to come here and go ahead and start doing rainbow colors so I'm going to have um, red orange and then I'm going to keep going so I'm going to go ahead and get that so I have all of these tabs on here now, and you see the shadows that are behind them. I did that by going to, um, I selected all of them by hitting the shift key and selecting them each one at a time. You have to do that because otherwise you're going to select this picture too. And then going to format options and then drop shadow. You can see if I click that, it looks different. I adjusted the shadow by adjusting the angle and the distance a little bit so, so it looks a little bit more shadowed. Um, click on the wrong thing. So there you go. That's how you do that. So now that I have all my tabs on here, I need to put them so they're underneath the paper because right now they look kind of funny. So I want to put them underneath the paper. I'm going to click all of them and I'm going to hit command or control, depending on if you have a Mac or a uh, PC, command, control, uh, command, shift down, and they're going to go underneath. Now I don't have enough showing right now, so I have to come over and kind of adjust my paper in a little bit. So now I have more of the, actually, I'm going to trim this down a little bit because I think there's just too many pages that come right there. So now I'm going to adjust it back this way a little bit. There we go. So now I might even make this a little bit longer because it's kind of sticking out funny down here. There we go. I can also come here and adjust this if I wanted to make it a little bit more rounded, whatever. So anyway, um, that's how you make the tabs. Get rid of this page number thing down here. You don't need that. Okay. So now you want to um, add text boxes to these so you can label the tabs. Um, coming over here, I'm going to label this, change my font, move the text down. I'm going to label this. I'm going to uh, label it for what I'm going to make my first note to be. Um, Okay, so now that text is still too big, so I'm going to click on the text box and I'm going to move it down. And I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to center it. And that's how you do that. Let's see if I can go up just a tiny bit. Okay, then I'm just going to uh, duplicate my text box and move it to the next one. And then I'm going to title that what I want my next tab to be, which is going to be Cornell Notes. I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. So now I'm going to take this, duplicate it again, bring it down here, and do This card. Okay, so I have basic tabs set up. So I would keep going if I was going to add more information.
So now if I look, this is going to be on every single slide. And I can't edit it on these slides now that this is in the background. I can't do anything with it, which is fine because I don't want to. So now that I'm, gonna, I'm done with my background, this is what every page is going to look like. I want to start adding my content to the slides. So the first thing you got to do is get rid of these things because you don't need them. Okay. Now you have your blank canvas. So the first thing I'm going to do is a note slide. So I, like I said, I love to use graphic organizers. I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm also going to show you how to make a quick Cornell notes. It's actually faster probably than making graphic organizers, but I really like to make graphic organizers. So I'm going to go to my shapes tool. Um, again, you can use any shapes that you you know, what? Um, there's whole bunches of them in here. Um, so if like one of these other shapes makes sense for you, use it. I kind of like the ones with the curved edges um, the most, but you can use any of them. I like to use the triangles for like social classes. You can see the social pyramid. Um, you can use a sun, you can use a cloud. Again, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use the curved edges one because that is one of my favorites. And I'm going to come over here, I'm going to make a shape. I'm going to do like a three column type graphic organizer. So I'm going to come over here, make this one. Then I'm going to duplicate it twice. So then you can take it, line them all up, look at it, see if it makes sense. Use the red lines to guide you. You see how I moved it. You got the red line that shows them in the middle of the paper. It also will sometimes gives you lines that'll show you're lined up like this way too. I don't need to be because I kind of want it just to make, make sure I'm on the flat part of the paper. So then I'm going to come through, I'm going to edit the colors because we want fun colors. Um, I'm more of a bright colored person, um, which are easy to find right here. But if you want like a um, pastel -y type colors, you can always do custom colors. And that's right here. So again, you, the paint bucket is the fill bucket. You're going to click that to fill the color in here. Then you're going to click on the, the plus sign to add a custom color. And you can literally pick from any color in the rainbow. So if I come over to this green color, I can, as you go this way more, the color gets softer. So if I want like a pastel-y color, I can just pick that and it fills in a nice little light green circle. Then I can come over and do another custom color. Um, let's do a custom blue. That one's pretty. So I'm going to do that one. And then let's do um, an orange. And I'm very, uh, like, sometimes almost too picky with my colors because I like it to show meaning too. So there's a reason why I'm picking green, blue right here because I'm going to make a, I'm making a note slide for geography. So thinking about geography of Egypt, when I teach geography, I'd like them to know like what land features are there and what water features are there. And the big thing we talk about when it comes to geography is opportunities and challenges. So I always have them write notes on what they think the opportunities of these are. And as they go through other civilizations, they start to draw connections that certain geographic features create, um, a very similar opportunities and challenges to a lot of these um, civilizations or to the people. So I'm going to go ahead and what I'm putting back here, it can't be edited by the kids. I'm going to show you that in a minute, um, but I'm going to go ahead and put the labels on it. So I'm going to draw a text box up here and I'm going to change the font. Uh, let's pick something different. And I'm going to label this one land features. And I'm going to duplicate it because I, it's just easier than drawing another text box. And that red line guides me, showing me that I have it lined up. And then I'm going to change this to water features. And then I'm going to duplicate it again and come over here and label this. Let me get my red line. There it is. and label this opportunities and challenges. Okay, so now this is set up. Um, I need to do two things. I need to add the text boxes for them to type in and I need to add a title. But I want them to edit 
be able to edit the text. What happens when you click over here is you're not going to be able to edit any of these this text. The kid can't the kids can't delete or change this text that I'm top, typing into the to the layout slides. I want them to be able to edit the text on these slides. So what I'm going to do is come over to this text box shape here and right by it there's a little arrow. I'm going to click that arrow and I'm going to click subtitle placeholder. So then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw my text boxes in. And then I'm going to edit my font. Uh, let's keep it as bubble gum. Why not? And then I'm going to duplicate it twice. And then I'm going to come over here and line it up. That is definitely not lined up. Eh, there we go. Didn't see my red line. This one's not going to line up because of this, so I'm going to have to come up here and move that up. Maybe a little bit more. All right, so I have the text in here, and what happens is when you go over here, it's going to say click to add subtitle. And they, as soon as they click in that box, that line goes away. So it's kind of like I tell them that that's their cue, that they need to add something there. I'm also going to come in here and add a title placeholder. And the reason why I'm not going to type directly on the slide is because once I give this a title onto the actual slide over here, it's going to title the slide for me. So when I go to like link things, if I'm linking slides to different things, I don't need to look and see what number that is. It's going to tell me. So I just want to go ahead and come over here and edit my text, make that a little bit bigger because it's a title, and I'm going to center it. And I'm going to make sure it's centered. Yeah, okay. So now I have I'm done with that note slide. I do like to come and do this, though, just because I like to add depth to these. I come over and I format them for a drop shadow just because it gives it a little bit more you know 3d effect to it you don't have to do that i just do i just like to so now i'm going to come up to another layout oh and by the way you might want to rename this slide up here too so it'll be renamed right on the i'll show you in a minute but when you add the slide it'll be named on the slides that you're going to add to your actual notebook so i'm going to title this as uh, geography. Oh, there it is, geography. So now I'm going to add Cornell notes. So Cornell notes are typically a line down here, a line across, and then a line at the bottom so you can do a summary. You can use do that using the line tool. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw a line right about there down the page. You can make it thicker or lighter if you want by using that. And then I'm going to add another one. And then I'm going to add one more down at the bottom. Now, if you decide, like, once you get these lines in here that you need them thicker, you want to change the color, um, you made one longer than the other, you can always just click on it, edit it by doing that, grabbing the blue line and moving it. Okay, so Cornell notes typically consist of either keywords or essential questions on this side or a summary. Actually, I'm going to make this longer, go down the page more, um, or a summary down here or, you know, whatever. And then your main notes are in this big bulky section over here. So this is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to come over here and add my text boxes because I want the kids to edit all of this. So I'm going to add my placeholder text subtitle placeholder and add where I want them to write the notes, add where I want them to write the summary, do it again. And maybe I'm going to add, there we go. 
and then add another box here. And then I want to add a title for this page too. So then I can click here if I want to quickly select by holding the shift key and select all of these boxes and change the font. Uh, let's do that one. Um, you can change if I want to deselect that one. And here's all my text, actual text boxes. I can make it smaller text so it'll fit more information. I can come up here and I can center this and make my font a little bit bigger on there since it's the title. Um, I also want to add text boxes with just the fact that this is a note slide. There's notes here. Make that font. It doesn't matter what these text boxes, how big they are or whatever, because the kids won't be able to click on it when they get to the actual slide. So then I can make that, just say like keywords, whatever, however you want your Cornell notes to look. But then that's the Cornell notes. And if I want to actually make this go over the red line, I can just grab it and drag it, drag this over so it's more on the side. So it looks you know, nicer so you don't have two lines sticking out. You can do exactly what I would do. Um, so there's my Cornell notes. And now I want to do an activity slide. So how I typically do it, I do notes and then an activity, notes and an activity, notes and an activity. Um, but I'm just quickly trying to show you how to do some of these real quick. So to do a postcard, I'm going to add shapes. So I'm going to make a big long white shape here. And I want it to be white. So I'm going to change it to white. That'll be the top of the postcard. Then I'm going to add a line. Actually, I think I'm gonna add a shape. I'm gonna do a very skinny little rectangle here to separate the top and the bottom. And this is when I would kind of probably zoom in so I can make sure that I make everything even because I'm picky kind of that way. Like, see, that's a tiny bit longer than that one, so I will come through and fix that. There. So then I can make the fill on this. I can even make it skinnier if I want. I can make the fill black. Make sure this is black. And then I got a top and bottom. Let me zoom out. Okay, so I got my top part of my postcard where they're going to add a picture, and then I have to have my text box like where they're going to or the, the box that they're going to write their text in when they write a letter to a friend and then I have to have the little address section so I want to come over here and add another shape make it white And then again, I got to zoom in because I can see I didn't hit right up here all the way. Click that. And that looks good enough. And then I'm going to actually duplicate this. And then I'm going to resize it so it's smaller. And come in and fit it right in here. Make sure that it's all lined up right. And then make it so it's the length as I need. Okay. So now I'm going to zoom out. And now I have like a basic postcard um, set up. If I want to make this area a little big, I just need to, oops, drag the wrong one. And you just drag this a little bit that way. And then I have a little bit more room over here for my address. Okay, so typically when I do a postcard, 
I have them add a picture of wherever they're, you know, visiting or, you know, talking about. Um, I like to do postcards when I talk about geography so they can include a picture of, you know, say the Nile River or whatever they can put up here. Then down here, I'm actually going to make both of these a little bit bigger going down. I want them to be able to write too. Okay. Over here, this is where they're going to actually type to someone. So again, I need, I need a placeholder. And since they're going to be typing, I kind of use the handwriting type font. If you can see, I kind of like handwriting fonts anyway. Um, but I'm going to reuse the handwriting font, bring the font down a little bit. So they have plenty of room to write and they're going to add information there. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a little text box right here that says to, so they know it's the address. <laughs> Oops. So I'm going to click here and make that um, something that looks more Okay, um, I'm going to add a stamp picture too. So what I do is I go to insert image, search the web, and I'm going to search for blank stamp PNG. When you add PNG after it, it is going to give you um, a non or a blank background. So I like that one. I'm going to drag it over and there it is. So now I'm going to resize it. So I put the stamp right there and it's a little bit big. So I'm going to bring it up like that. Maybe this needs to be a little bit wider too. Again, this you play around with things so you get them the way you want it to look. So now they have a stamp. So what they can do is they can search a picture, say, I don't know, um, the pyramids. Um, they find a picture they like, they can bring it over and make a stamp out of it. They would do this on the actual slide, but I'm just showing you really quick. So they can make it really small. They can even crop it. Now to just the pyramid, maybe a little bit too small, but you get my picture. So now they can take their picture and put it in there and oh my gosh, I got a stamp just like that. So I'm going to take that off because I don't want that to be on their screen. So this is where they're going to type. I also need a text box for where they're going to add their address. Oops. I'm going to insert a subtitle placeholder right here for them to add their handwritten And I want it to be the same font that I used over there and make it smaller. Maybe a little bigger. Okay. So that's how you make a postcard. So now the only thing I haven't made yet is a cover. So I do need to make a cover. I, I already went ahead and downloaded covers, but you can go and search composition notebook cover. Um, I search high resolution because I want a good resolution. Um, the one that I use for my notebooks, I actually uh, took from this digital notebook right here on Slides Mania. These are all free. You can actually go to education and get a whole bunch of different notebooks. But I use this background cover right here as my actual notebook cover. Um, but you can't, so you can beg, borrow, and steal from that. You can find one on the internet. I found one on the internet that I'm going to put on here. So I'm going to upload from computer. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to crop it into this shape right here. So I'm going to resize that, make this way rounder. That's not what I wanted. That little orange button. There we go. Make it way rounder. And then let it go. 
drag this down so it fits the slide. And I can add a, even if I wanted to, to cover that white, a little bit of white right there, I can add a black bar. And move it down. And then make it black. There we go. So that is how you make that cover. Um, I'm going to add a shape so they can, you can add the title of your unit. So I like to do word art, insert word art, and title it Unit 3 Egypt. It's going to look kind of boring at first, but then you can change the font into whatever you want it to be, and then fill it, and then resize it. So it fits nice and neat into the space. And then you can even add a little text box that they can, you can have them write names or whatever. Changing the size and the font again. Oops. And I want that to be kind of right there. And then put my subtitle placeholder. Hold on. Didn't realize that did that. There we go. Subtitle placeholder. And I want that to be architect's daughter and I want it to be pink. So that's how you make the cover. Now this is where the, the, the renaming thing comes in handy. As you see, I haven't even gotten into the actual putting these slides in. Um, this is, no. So now that I have some notes and activities um, done, I'm going to add these to my notebook. I'm going to do that by coming over here. By this plus side, there's slides, a uh, slide with layout. The layouts are what you just made. So if I click this, I'm going to add the cover. The cover needs to go before that, so I'm going to drag it up. And then I'm going to click under here. I'm going to add the next slide. So I'm going to come over here. I've got my Cornell notes. And then I'm going to click over here and add my postcard. As you can see, because I named them, they're all named here. So then I'm going to come up here and add my titles. I didn't add titles to these. Uh, to this last one, but you're going to get the picture of what, of what I need in a second. So the reason why I added a title instead of just typing the title, I added a title placeholder is because when I name this, and I name this, I'm going to come up here and start linking things on my tabs. So the reason I name it is when I go to link, it's going to make things so much easier. So I'm going to come up here and add a shape, which is a basic square and add it right over this tab. Then I'm going to make that tab transparent and I'm going to make the border of that tab transparent. So you won't even be able to see it. But what I'm going to do is link that shape, command K, I'm going to link it to a slide in this presentation. This is the geography of Egypt, and there it is. So this will make um, linking your tabs so much easier. So geography of Egypt. Now I'm going to link this to Cornell Notes. Um, actually duplicate. Then come over here and add it. And then get rid of that link. And then duplicate that again and add it over the postcard. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to link it. Command, oops, command K or control K. Slides, this is my Cornell notes. And then the postcard, which I didn't label, um, 
you can see when I come over here, it doesn't have a label. It makes it a little bit more difficult because it doesn't have a name. But um, I only have four slides, so pretty easy. So now that I have one slide done, all I have to do is come over here and drag a blue line. I would have dragged it across all my tabs once I had them done. And it will click and it will highlight all the tabs you, the, all the links you made. Command C. Come over to each side. Command V. Command V. Command V. So that when you put it into uh, present mode, then you can just click to go through those things really quick. So last thing um, that people are a little nervous about when they want to do um, these notebooks, they're like, do I have to have all of this done in advance? No, you don't. Um, you can go ahead and figure out maybe how many slides you want, name them all like I did, and then you can um, just leave them blank for right now. So like I would go to edit themes, say I know that my next slide is going to be um, something about pharaohs. First, let's just make up something easy. So this one's going to be pharaohs. And I'm going to have that slide just be for pharaohs. You have to have a slide for each activity you're going to do. And then this slide is going to be, um, let's say cartouche. So I can leave these blank for right now. Um, come on over here and then add them to my slide deck. So I'm going to add the pharaohs one and I'm going to add the cartouche one that I just made. Okay. So you have all these blank slides. You want to push these out to the kids. Isn't it how are you going to add the content? This is how you're going to do it. You're going to make a cut. Actually, let me name this. Um, example. Okay. So you're going to make a copy of the entire presentation. And you, you can name it whatever you want. So I'm going to just keep, this is how I do it. I use it, as, I'll name mine like the master copy. This is the student copy. Okay. So now you have two copies, your original and the student. So before you shove this out to the kids, all of the ones that you want to add content to later. So say, I, I know these three aren't going to change, but I'm going to add content to these later. So I'm going to delete these. I'm going to high select them all, and then I'm going to delete. I'm going to come back to my original, select the ones that I need to put back into the presentation, and copy them. Command C or uh, Control C. Come over here, click underneath it, and paste. And when I paste that, it's going to give me this little message. This is where it's super important. You want to link and keep original styles. When you link it, it is linked automatically back to your thing. So say that I come over here and add content. Um, just add a shape right now. Okay, I add content. I can come back over here and this thing should update. I don't know which one I... Oh, right here. This one will show update. That means I added something onto my slide that's not on the student slide. So what they need to do is they're going to highlight. You have to highlight the links. The links over here will not work on them. And I don't have any links on here right now. But if you don't um, highlight Control X and then click update and then Control V, paste your links back on, the links won't stay. So how I teach the kids is we Highlight, Control X, Update, Control V. That's how we do it every time. Highlight, Control X, Update, Control V. So once I click Update, the content appears. So as long as you have the blank slides there that you're going to add content to later, you can add content as you go, which is the greatest thing ever, ever, ever in the whole world ever. <laughs> when I find that out, I was almost crying in relief because that means I don't have to sit there and try to get a whole notebook's worth of stuff done in one day. I can do one or two slides at a time and get them ready to go out. So that is the basics of how you um, add content to these slides, um, how you create a digital notebook. Something else I wanted to let you know really quick before I go, how do you get ideas for what kind of activities? Um, so I have 
a great um, sheet that I found online and I'm going to link it for you in the description. Um, but this sheet has all different kinds of activities and it was free. Somebody had posted it on their website and it had so many different ideas. And they're all in alphabetical order and it gives you an idea of the directions and what they should do. And these are all different kinds of activities that the students can use to apply content in a more meaningful and creative way versus a worksheet. So I'm going to link that below. I use a lot of those ideas in my digital notebook. Another great place to go to um, search the Internet. You will find lots of free templates. I search the Internet all the time. Um, ditch that textbook on Twitter. I'm going to give them a big, huge shout out. They're some of my favorite people. I love Matt Miller so much. Um, he gives out free templates all the time. It's something he sent out a couple of years ago, but they retweet content. Um, he retweeted this the other day, sign up for his, um, digital, like he get he sends stuff like, I think it's called the digital. I don't know. He sends it through your email and it has all kinds of free things all the time. So, um, that'd be a great tool to use. Sorry, I had to get rid of that text. Um, but here's some free things just on this he sent out two days ago, or a day ago or two days ago or so on Twitter. Um, free templates, Snapchats, um, Instagram stories, uh, TikToks, tweets, sticky notes. And here's just a basic interactive notebook one. Icon boards, treasure maps, math icons, art gallery icons millionaire templates. I, some of these things you can use in a digital notebook. Some of you might not. Blackout poetry would be a great thing. Hexagonal thinking, fair model for vocab. I mean, so many ideas and free. And you can use it as is, or you can jazz it up and make it your, make it your own if you're more like me and like colors and stuff like that. You can do it however you want. But this is a, just a great idea of a place you can go to get free things. Um, so definitely follow uh, ditch that textbook on Twitter or sign up, go to their website and sign up for their email stuff. They email you free things all the time. It's such an amazing website. Um, and slides mania for all different kinds of notebook templates. You can go to their education site. There's notebook, um, interactive notebooks and manipulatives games, all kinds of things. But if I'm just going to look at their notebooks and you click notebook style, you can see all different kinds of notebooks that you can, again, use just as is, or you can beg, borrow, and steal from it, which is what I did. I used little bits of things here and there to make my notebooks. So um, that is it. I hope you found this really informative. I hope you can use something like this in your classroom. I will, um, if you have any questions, please just leave a comment. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but thank you so much for participating and watching this today. I hope you learned something. Have a great rest of your day.